Check one, two, check one, two, check one, two. Pros and cons of starting a cigar lounge, 2023. Oh, righty there. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I can't, you know. You know, Eric, sometimes you wear stretchy pants. What's going on, everybody? Today's episode, what are the pros and cons of owning and opening a cigar lounge? People ask us all the time, do you want to have your own cigar lounge? We're going to talk about it. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of The Burn Down. My name is Justin, a.k.a. The Dapper Cigar. This is Eric, a.k.a. Brother Cigar. If you're new here, we'd really appreciate if you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Yes, sir. You know what? I want to bring this up because people ask me all the time, like, Eric, did you ever think about owning a cigar lounge? Do you ever want to open up one? You know, have you ever looked into it? And I you- thought about it. I <clears throat> thought about being a venture of ours in yeah. the future. And I always said, you know, the burn down lounge. Not right now, def like definitely not. At least in New York, maybe if you know we move down south or something, it might be more of a uh, an idea. But in, especially in New York, there's so many restrictions and crazy taxes and so many things you got to hurdle over to get it open. Well, you know, one way you can get around this is if you make it a private, like a members only lounge, mm, like a social club type of thing. Like you open up a spot and it's uh, like a standalone building. And you make it a members club and people pay a membership fee and you can make the membership fee like a dollar. Mm. And then people can come and just smoke cigars there. Oh, you know, I, didn't know, do, I didn't know that loophole. I don't know. I'm assuming because if it's a members club, like it's a gentleman, like a, 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 a I would say, club? I would say gentleman's club, but like for the actual term of a gentleman, not a gentleman's club, like a strip joint. We're going to look and get some ass. You know, like an place. actual gentleman's hangout. Some dirty fish tacos. You can go and people can be a member. It's a private club. And then you can kind of just do what you want inside the club. You can play game. You can play cards. You can. Drink, I always you know. said like you know maybe it might be a, a retirement thing. You know like you know, I thought to... about it. you know I actually thought about the the style of it. I don't know if you've ever seen the show Lucifer. No. Lucifer is a show. Have not. Um, where the whole premise of the show is that this guy, his name is is Lucifer, son, of, you know, son of God, uh, uh, cast out of heaven, sent to rule hell for all eternity, and. Um, he decides he doesn't want to rule hell anymore, so he goes to he go comes to Earth and goes to L.A. and opens up a nightclub and just fucking parties. Hell yeah! Okay, and then he gets into like it's kind of like a crime detective show too. He gets involved and he's got the special power. We can you know obviously he's you know the devil. So all those things, but he has a club. His club is called Lux, and it's like it's like basically Carnegie Club, but a little bit more of a. a a little modern twist where it's not as, as like old school, okay. but it's still the classy where you have like the nice tables mm. and the big staircase, the beautiful bar, the big piano in the middle of the joint. And he always plays piano and does like – and I always said if I open a cigar lounge with Eric, I want it to look just like this. Because every night he comes down the big stairs and he op- and everybody starts applauding him and he walks down the stairs. I guess he's the – owner of the club i'm like this is fucking awesome and he's always wearing suits and it's great dressed in the nines so anyway so i found this article you know it's from 2023 so what is there an exact date on it no it says 24 pros and cons of starting a cigar lounge business business business, business. <laughs> in 2023 starting a cigar lounge business. so they go through all different kinds of pros and cons and i thought it'd be a good idea you know to uh let the people uh, understand the pros and cons of uh, lounge. there's one in here that i don't know if it's a <laughs> if it's truly a pro well let's get to it okay because i'm reading i just saw it and i said yeah okay stop stop okay well let's read the first one right? stop it get, get some, some help, help. Um, and I haven't seen it yet, so when I okay. turn the page, I'm going okay. to see if I know which one you're talking about. But the first one is, they say, the pro is rewarding work. Starting a cigar lounge business can be really be rewarding and are solving an immediate issue for your customer. It's kind of cut off, so I don't know what it actually says here, unfortunately. We should do one pro and then one con, and then yeah. one pro and then one con. So it says, solving an immediate issue for your customer... Oh, it's fucking cut off. Oh, bullshit. Well, what does it say? It says... So, it says starting a cigar lounge business... Rewarding can, work. Yeah, rewarding work. So, you know, it's basically saying that you're you're creating an establishment where people actually care about and truly care about and want to come here. I can see and, that because you know, when you... It's a people business. Exactly. It's a people business. And everybody that comes into a cigar lounge is always leaving a little bit more relaxed, a little bit calm, right? Yeah. They come to smoke a cigar and, and, and chill and hang with people. So it's very rewarding to see all the people after their hard, their hard work, hard day's work to come and relax at your joint. Yeah. Is it daily physical activity? 
No, it is not. Is it, is the, um, is the pro? Well, no. One of the cons it says is crowded space. Competition is high when it comes to your cigar lounge business, so it's important that you spend a good amount of time analyzing the market and understanding where the demand lies. I can see this in certain areas, like New York City. Yeah. Okay, there's obviously a, a lot of well-established... I don't want to say a lot, because there's, I mean, there's plenty of cigar lounges, but I can name you know five right off the bat that are very well-established cigar lounges. So if you're trying to open up something like that, it's going to be pretty competitive, yeah. right? But... If you're in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, like if you're in upstate New York and there's a big cigar community, if you find that there's a big cigar community there and you open up, there's probably not much competition. So it depends I mean, on where you are. I mean, I feel like it's easy as going just Googling cigar lounges in, you know, uh, Nyack, New York and just see right. the radius. And then if you don't see anything for 20, 30 miles, you're like, hmm, all right, this might be a good spot. Then you have to take it one step further and find out, is there no cigar lounge because people don't smoke there? Or is there no, or is there a populace that smokes and they don't have a place to smoke? You sure, know, true. So you could probably do, you could probably send out some feelers and be like, hey, do you smoke cigars? Do you not smoke cigars? Take a survey and then see. Um, so the so the next one is uh, meaningful business connections. You never know who you will meet at a cigar lounge. Just could be the start of a credible business opportunity. Which, well, that's the same as rewarding work. Well, uh, it's you know, no, no. Rewarding work is that you're giving back to the people and meaningful business connections, just like what we do here. You meet all different kinds of interesting people. You never know who's going to walk in, and you never know what opportunity lies behind that closed door, my friend. It's true. You know, it's, it's true. a little bit different. A little bit different. I also want to say that these cons, I don't know if they're they're not really negative. They might be, let's call them challenges, because the next one right here is called finding the right supplier. It says most businesses in this space Go to supplier. Um, well, it's cut off too. But basically, finding the right person to su- be your supplier of cigars, and that's not necessarily a con because you can. It's just a challenge. You have to go about and find which one yeah. works for you, and it's probably going to be a trial and error. Now, we don't own Cigar Lounge, so we we you know are just saying off of uh, yeah, dude, our, our educated guess, you know. Um, but the, the next one that they say on Pro is daily physical activity. I don't know about that, man. You're not in construction, okay? You're sitting in a cigar lounge making sure that, ma- that your inventory is good and you're making a cigar profit. Cigar lounge businesses typically involve a much greater degree of movement than other lines of work. Most days you will spend your day walking, running errands of your business, performing a multitude of tasks that have a positive impact. What? I don't really no, do- I, don't I, don't, I don't know about that. As far as I know, every cigar um, lounge I've been, they're behind a, behind a, you know, a counter smoking a cigar, watching TV. Uh, yeah, they are up in the cigar lounge. You know, replacing, replenishing, or uh, you know, interacting with the with the crowd, or going in the humidor and helping you and walking around. But to say it's daily physical activity, unless you're doing crunches in the back, like you know, he's smoking a cigar. But I'll deal with, disagree with that one. Uh, one of the cons. I'm going to skip over this one because so, this is not. This is they say motivation of employees, but that's not just for cigar lounges. Okay, that's just a general like managerial. Yeah. Challenge is trying to motivate your employees. Yeah, okay, provide good incentives. Good but the next one is low margins, and it says the gross margins for your cigar lounge business are typically around forty three percent, which can make it more challenging to incur new expenses and maintain profitability. Although forty percent is not a bad profit margin. I mean, right? I, I always thought like thirty percent was a typical number. Right? I always thought at least twenty percent was a good number. You know, and, gr- and granted, it also depends on where how, what price you're getting your cigars at, but. Typically, I think it's a little bit more than 40% because I know from personal experience when you sell a cigar, they're going to mark it up 100% in some cases. Wow. I mean, look at our cigar. Our cigar is essentially marked up 100%, isn't it? Yeah, essentially. Yeah. In, in some cases, and I know that that's the case for a lot of Like if a cigar lounge is going to buy it for 4 bucks, they're going to charge 8 and then incur any tax that they have on it. Yeah. If you buy it for $10, you might not be able to sell it for 20 Maybe you sell it for 18 or something, you know, but... Yeah, um, some, of these, some of these are kind of funky. But this is good because this is where we're kind of debunking some of these yeah. you know amazing perks and discounts working in a cigar lounge business comes with its perks as a seller you know the own your, you are your own boss with starting a cigar lounge business you're the one that makes the decisions yeah, man. Come on. i mean these aren't no this the next one is good though it says local community one of the best parts yeah, of starting okay. a cigar lounge business is that you can develop a local following by selling your products at craft shows farmer markets even local storefront businesses uh, this gives you access to additional revenue streams and loyal customers. So that's not so much the cigar lounge itself, right? Because I can see that, you know, the cigar lounge itself is a brick and mortar spot. It's yeah. a lounge. People can come in there and they can smoke cigars and that's how you make a profit. If you want to go to a different spot and take your lounge and say, hey, I'm going to sell cigars from my lounge at a farmer's market, a craft fair, an event, 
that is also venturing off into different business mm. avenues. That's not necessarily mm. the lounge, although the lounge is like the backing behind that. But I will say that you do develop a relationship with your customers. Okay, yeah. it's not like, for instance, you open up a grocery store. If you open up a grocery store like fucking Pathmark or or Wegmans or Uncle Giuseppe's, odds are you're not know you don't know people on a personal level that come into your store. But if you open a cigar lounge. Every owner of a cigar lounge. Hey, Johnny. Hey, Bobby. They know because you Denise, get the same guys. Robert, yeah. you Justin, know them. How you doing? So, Good to see you. How's the family? You know, uh, big one of the biggest, biggest, biggest cons. High employee turnover is taxes. The mother effing taxes. Uncle the Sam taxes. coming after. Got to pay them taxes. As a cigar okay. lounge business, you typically pay self-employment taxes, which can be quite high. Unfortunately, they're talking self-employment. What about the fucking tobacco yeah. tax you pay? They don't even mention that in here. Well, yeah, it, it varies by state again, but it's important to understand what you will be paying in taxes each year so you can determine if the work you're taking on is worth it. So here's funny because they put taxes here and they say typically you'll pay self-employment taxes, which makes sense, right? When you open up your own business and you're self-employed, you're not going to get a tax return anymore. Yeah. Okay, you're not you don't have a W two from a company. That you have to submit, and then you get a big tax return. You have to pay taxes at the end of the year because you make X amount that hasn't been taken out every month or every paycheck. So at the end of the year, I made X amount, and the government's going to take their share. So that's your self-employment tax. Then they have another one that says you may need to charge sales tax. Depending on what state you're in, you got to charge sales tax. But not on top of that, you have to charge tobacco tax. So you're paying a lot of fucking taxes. As per usual. Okay. As per effing usual. So, and then they say, "Oh, we got to tax business owners. Business owners get taxed the most out of everybody." That's when I, made, you know, when I, I kind of chuckle when they say, "You need to raise minimum wage," and I'm like, "Okay, but that's just going to make everything more expensive for everybody else." So. But granted, you know, as a business owner, and we are business owners. Okay, we have the burnout pockets as a business. And there, a blueprint. there are benefits. There are tax benefits. You do have to pay, you know, your tax. You can't get around get around the import, the income tax. You got to pay it. Mm-hmm. But there are benefits of write offs, expenses. That's a write off. Okay, so you there's there's that how you can lower your taxable income so that you pay less taxes. Uh, and if you are W two, can't do that unless you you know, itemize it and then you have the household can't and a lot it. of that stuff. But as a business owner, there's a lot of taxes. Okay, mm-hmm. a lot a lot. Of, I mean, a lot of expenses that you can a lot of write offs utilize. Uh, let's see, a pro is higher likelihood of getting referrals. This business is all about referrals, which can be very impactful. A way to attract and retain customers. It's critical that you have a great referral program in, in the place of that incentivize your customers to tell your friends about your program or your product. Okay, you gotta speak up a little bit, bro. Why am I low? Yeah, very low. Can't even hear you. What the hell? You gotta speak up. Maybe just maybe. it's just bas- that's basically saying you know word of mouth. If you're good, if you're a good shop, if you're a good lounge, you know the word of mouth will get around to you. That's that's what they're. You referring. just have that gentle voice. Man. I do. You know? I do. This one they have as pro. This is not a pro. Okay, Location this is, is everything. They say easy to learn business. Oh. Okay, stop it. All right, listen. <laughs> yeah, it says when starting a cigar lounge business, there is there is a ton of information. It's on page. I Did know. you miss location is everything? How is that a pro? Oh, no, I'm, I, I'm bouncing around. Easy to learn business. When starting your cigar lounge business, there's a ton of information readily available to you online, like Facebook groups, YouTube videos, starter story, whatever the hell that is. Plug. This will help you get the business started and answer your que- any questions. However, I don't want people to think, oh, it's so easy to do it. No, starting any business is not easy, yeah. okay? You have to obviously learn. There is a learning curve. You're not just going to jump in. You can't just watch five YouTube videos and be like, I know how to run a cigar lounge. No, no, no. no. I know how to do this business. No, no, no. no. Stop that. I feel like, (laughs) you know, it's, uh, and it kind of goes with one of the cons here. I mean, the pros, a simple business model, but essentially. Yeah, get a simple business. uh, You buy cigars, you mark them up, and you sell them. Yeah, exactly. It's not really an easy business to learn because you have to know. Origin cigars, different country cigars, where this one comes from, what this what this flavor flavor provides, what this you know, tobacco flavor profile provides. It's like a, you know, you need some experience. You can't just be uh, cold cold turkey. Yeah, know. if you want to be successful, you can't be like an eighteen year old kid and be like, mm, I never smoked a cigar in my life. I'm gonna open up a cigar lounge. Like perfect example, you're a cigar smoker, and you want to go into one of your local lounges, right? You have a couple options. You want a spot that you can go into and enjoy your cigars. Let's say you go into a spot 
and you ask the guy, hey, look, I'm looking for a cigar. You're like, what do you got new? Where is this? Like, can you recommend a cigar for me? And they don't have any clue. Oh, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I just. Then you go to another cigar lounge and you ask the guy, hey, I'm looking for a cigar. I'd look. He goes, oh, no problem. Let me show you what we got. You got this cigar. This just came out. This actually one cigar of the year. We got this one. What do you typically smoke? You smoke Padrones? All right. You're probably going to like Nicaraguans. Here's another Nicaraguan. Have you been in a cigar lounge before? You're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna go to that lounge because yeah. you're gonna develop a relationship with that guy. He's gonna know what you smoke, like Matadors. Frank from Matadors, okay, he no longer works at Matadors. He's probably loving life down in Florida. Shout out to Frank. That's where he moved, Florida. I think so. Frank is a great guy. Okay, smart dude. When I was first went into Matadors, he remembered what I smoked. Like I, he remembers the first cigar that he gave me, and he goes, "I remember you liked that cigar." We got another one that comes in, just a very similar flavor, maybe a little bit bolder. A little bit stronger, a little bit stronger, uh, fuller body. So I'm like, mm. try this one. I love it. And then I say, hey, you got this one? He goes, yeah, you might not like that one because it's, it's you know, I smoked it. I know what you like. And that one's a little bit too light for you. But he would know. He would remember. Or I'd come in and say, hey, Frank, I, I smoked uh, the other day. I smoked, uh, you know, my father, Las Florida Las Santillas. Loved it. He goes, oh, it's a great stick. He goes, you like that one? Try this one. Made by my father, too. It's the next level. He knows all the shit. You want to go to those lounges. You don't want to go to the lounge and go. I don't know what I do. I just sell you cigars. You got to be in a cigar lounge first. Obviously, you got to be in. You got to be in. The, you got to have boots on the ground. You got to be in it to win it. You got to be have experience yes. first. Honestly, it's not. You know, it's not like easy business model. No problem. Uh, they call it a pro. Never a dull moment with starting it's, a cigar. So like just. <laughs> what, what website is this? This is right. this. Oh, it said starter story. It's starterstory.com. Oh, yeah. Start a story. <laughs> block, block, block. So never a dull moment. With starting a cigar business, there is never truly a dull moment. Your job offers a lot of variety and allows you to meet interesting people from all walks of life. Okay. I understand that. Yeah. True. I will say this, too. Uh, there's one in here called face-to-face interaction. So I will say if you are not – if you're somebody who is not um, – Not? If you, if you do not like, you know, social interaction – if you don't like to peep to, to speak to people, if you don't like conversing with people, if you're not uh, good public speaking, stuff like that. I mean, public speaking, maybe not so much, but you are speaking in front of a bunch of people, right? Especially yeah. if you do events and whatnot. If you're somebody who doesn't like that, going into a face-to-face business like a cigar lounge may not be the best option for you. Uh, if you might want to go into maybe like an online distributor, okay, mm-hmm. where you're selling cigars online, you don't really have that face-to-face with your customers. Cigar lounge, you will have a face-to-face re- interaction every single day you're gonna have people coming in you're gonna say hello to them you're gonna have them sitting down they're gonna ask you questions you're going to have that face-to-face interaction so be prepared you will have to talk to people yeah and you can't text them you have to talk to them <laughs> it's speaking of that <laughs> it, it, you know speaking of uh, interaction it says more of a challenge is a con more of a challenge to run your business from home running your business from the comfort yes. of your own home yes. is a big appeal for many entrepreneurs with a cigar lounge business you may, you are more likely to run your business out of your office or storefront place. You are more likely to run your business out of your office or storefront place. Sorry about that. Different. Uh, you might struggle financially at first. If you bootstrap your business or choose not to pay yourself or pay yourself less than what you're making at your corporate job, this can be financially taxing. It's important to adjust your lifestyle and set a plan for yourself so you don't find yourself in a stressful situation. Okay. Just like any other business, though. There you go. I like that. Didn't miss anything. What are some other ones that uh good like pro or uh pro. Um Pro of owning a cigar business. Or a cigar lounge. A pro of owning a cigar lounge. Or um business. I will say this. It is definitely Duplicable. Duplicable. Okay, okay. so like, let's say, for instance, true Matadors, okay? You open up one shop. You start with one shop, and you're very successful in that shop. You can just rinse and repeat. Whatever you did to open up this shop, you find another location, and you rinse and repeat. Open up another shop, yeah. and you can call it the same thing. True. Matador Cigars of Hopak, Matador Cigars of Roslyn. Mat- so shout out to Matador, you know, our... Our local lounge, but you can duplicate, right? Same thing with um, like Casa de Monte Cristo. Don't they have multiple locations? Of course they do. Okay, you can duplicate. Rocky Patel has his burn. There's burn in Florida. There's burn in Pittsburgh. You could duplicate it. 
once you find what works in, and uh, granted, you're going to have to do some research in your different areas, but once you find out the model, okay, I got this, these are cigars, I'm running these events, I'm doing this stuff, then you can open mm-hmm. up another shop. Mm-hmm. Then you can open up another shop. And you can kind of franchise out a little bit. All right. That, that, that's a good point. You know what I'm saying? That's a good point. Such an easy business model, as uh, as they so say. I mean, there's obviously a lot of stuff that goes into it. We don't own lounges. I'm just saying we've been in plenty of lounges. I think a con, though, it's not. I wouldn't necessarily say a con, but more of a difficulty. You have to have a lot of capital. You got to buy a lot of. Just gonna say, got to buy a lot of TVs. You got to buy a lot of chairs. You got to buy, you know, uh, you know, a lot of ashtrays, little accessories. You got to buy cases for to sell the accessories in. You got to buy a shit ton of cigar inventory. Mm -hmm. So you have to have a little bit of green, a little bit of dough in your pocket. You can get business loan, of course. Yeah. Right, but you're right. Your monthly expenses are going to be high because cigars aren't cheap. Okay, if you have. Business let's just risky, though. let's just let's let's put a number on it. How many cigars do you think? How many different cigars do you think are in a a good cigar lounge? Different like brands or like, different like brands with the r- different lines that they have. Like different cigars. So like my father's will have like fifteen different cigars. Yeah. Okay. okay. So how many different cigars do you think mm, to be a good lounge? <clears throat> I don't necessarily a hundred. Yeah, I would say I was the first number, but I also don't think it necessarily means. If you have X amount of brands, it makes you a good lounge. No, no, but I'm saying like if you walk into a good lounge, right, they're probably not going to have three different cigars. They're probably going to have 50 different cigars you can yeah, have. Yeah, yeah. Right? Now, it doesn't mean, like like you said, if you have 100, it doesn't mean you're a good lounge. But I'm saying you're going to have some sort of variety. So what do you think like the minimum variety? 20 different cigars? Minimum variety, I would say 30. 30. I mean, yeah. it depends, right? Because the Carnegie Club in Manhattan doesn't have a whole lot of cigars, but it's more of like a bar. Type you can of, also bring your own cigars. It's more of a bar there, yeah. feel. But if you're strictly a cigar lounge, okay, let's call it 30. How many cig- So if you have 30 different cigars, you need to have, what, a few boxes of each, right? You can't just have one box and then it sells out and they have to wait for you to get another box. So you probably have a few boxes of each. Yeah, I don't know. At least 10 to 15 boxes of each. So is that, You think that much? Is that 300? Is that 300? That's 3, three that's uh if you have 10 boxes of each cigar, it's 300 boxes. Yeah, 300 boxes. Okay. Now let's say so that means if you have you have well, that's 10 just inventory. Okay, right? well, just let's talk about cigars. Let's say you have 10, you have 30 different cigars and you want to have about 50 of each cigar, like, readily available, right? Mm-hmm. So that's 1,500 cigars. If every cigar costs you five bucks, right, to, to the cost of purchasing the cigar, it's obviously going to be a little bit more. Let's say it costs you five bucks. That's $7,500 worth of inventory. Mm-hmm. Let's call it ten grand. You have $10,000 worth of inventory in your lounge. Probably going to have more. That's a starter because there's some lounges that have 100 different cigars. Yeah. Right, so you're talking like ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty thousand dollars. Matadors probably has a hundred thousand dollars worth of inventory. Like you have a lot of inventory, okay. And now, how much do you think you're selling? Right, you're probably gonna have to do. They're spending ten thousand dollars, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars every single month to keep everything up and running. Yeah, I would think you obviously, you know, buy less when you're first starting, and then as you grow and as you gain a more of a customer base, then obviously you're buying more cigars. I wouldn't. Just off the rip, you know, fucking buy three, right. buy but I'm 3, saying 000, 300 boxes. It's not a business model where you're going to spend, you know, a couple hundred dollars a month to keep the lights on. You're gonna, probably going to spend tens of thousands of dollars a month yeah. to keep the lights on, mm-hmm. you know, to keep everything afloat. Yeah. And so, you, I forgot, like you said, you need capital. You need capital. And I forgot who, I forgot who, you know, what uh, entrepreneur that I listened to or watched or read, but they talk about like business loans and how... They kind of say like, you know, if you buy a business loan, if you use a business loan straight up to start your own business, you're kind of setting yourself up for failure because there's so mu- it's so much more riskier to uh, start a business and fail. There's more higher probability of starting a business and failing. But if you take out a business loan and your business fails, you still owe money on that loan. You still owe the loan. So it's like, you know, if you have uh, maybe 75% upfront of your own capital and then maybe 30% business loan, all right. Yeah, no, you're that, not that. in it. For, yeah. I mean, that's more manageable, but and also depends on like you know what type of business it is. If it's like a ten thousand dollar business loan, okay. And I feel I feel like also if you, if it's your money, you're you're more inclined to make it work. Yeah, you know what I'm sure. saying. For sure. Um, there is no 
like declare bankruptcy, I can't afford to pay back the loan, right? Uh-huh. There's, I can, it's my, I just, I put in $100,000 of my own money. I better make this fucking work. It's otherwise my I'm, money. Otherwise, I'm Audi 100000 okay? Can't do it. Audi 5000 my friend. It's my money, and I want it now. Uh, use it when you need it. <laughs> um, no, that's good. We're about a half an hour in. I think that was a good, quick little episode. Pros and cons. Yeah, Cigar yeah, Lounge. Yeah. What are we at? Half, I just said it. About a half an hour in. Oh, about a half hour. So I don't know if it was before uh, or a 26 little 26 minutes. It's okay. 26 minutes? Damn. It's a short episode, though. Man, it, it feels so much longer. I know, but it's a short episode. I, was, I for sure thought we were like 35 minutes. Damn. Now, pros and cons of owning your own cigar brand. Oh. Quick little segue into owning your cigar brand. Well, the pro is if you start a podcast and after four y- three years you can get your own cigar, well, it's easy to promote. You already have a, 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 a base, a, pro- a customer base that potentially might buy, especially if they work some special negotiate. And there's negotiation power up front. Yeah, it's, it's good pro. <laughs> I will say when you start a cigar brand, though um, – yeah, you try to – I mean, if you can build up a network prior of, of loyal followers and fans, then you have like a baseline where when you put something out, they're more inclined to, to buy it. Yeah. Although, you know, starting f- with your own cigar brand is probably less less capital. Yeah. I'm assuming depending on how many lines you come out with, right? If you come out with 10 different lines and you want to buy 10,000 cigars of each, you're going to need some capital, okay? Yeah. It's going to cost you a little Pretty coin penny. to – but you don't have to get a brick and mortar. You don't have to pay the utilities. Yeah. You don't have to pay all that stuff. You basically, you're, it's like that online model where you have your cigar and you send it out, and then our business model is one one brand, one size up front. Let it uh, build a nice little base. And there uh, will be more. There will definitely be more. But cigar. wait, there's more. We're putting it. We're putting out in that in the universe right now tonight on this podcast. Well, we already knew that, but. Let's document it so five years from now we can replay this and be like, huh, remember when we said it? Remember when oh, uh, five years from now, there we will have – five years from now, mark my words. Uh-oh. Okay. September uh, 20th. Five at, years from uh, now. 7.35 p.m. Five years from now, we will have the three lines completed and three sizes of Whoa. each five years from now. Whoa. That'll be 100%. Whoa. I like it. And we'll be probably looking at, at much more – than, than just because right now we have the one, but we also we're sampling the second one, okay. And by five years from now, we'll, we'll definitely have the third one. We will have a size up and a size down of all of those. So there'll be nine cigars, and we'll probably be talking about some some like limited edition ones. Yeah, you know, talking you know, about. I, I don't know. Obviously, we, I have to see how I feel once we get a second line. But you know, I feel like this is my baby. Like I don't know if I, uh, I don't know if I'm gonna start you know favoriting cigar lines. You know, this is this is what started it, babe. I know, but you can't you can't stop here. No, 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 no. There's no that. stopping here, man. No, no. We need to come that. for just one and done. But I could see people saying like, "Oh, what's your favorite one? What you know? Which one do you like the most? What you know? What's the best one?" And I'm like, eh. "Yeah, okay." Well, it's like somebody asking when you have four kids, "Who's your favorite?" Exactly. And they're all my favorite. And then you tell the one on the my side. My brand is the favorite. Mm. Burn down podcast is my burn down incorporate. That's my favorite. The burn down the burn down podcast. The, the burn, burn down, down cigars. Those are my favorite. Yeah, because we have cigars? like the because we have the burn down right. So this burn down incorporate is the umbrella. Then we have we have the burn down podcast. Okay, we have our burn down cigars. We have the blueprint. We'll have the next one. We'll have the next one. And then if we open up a lounge, we have the burn down lounge. Right, like we'll have the burn down incorporated is is the Bro, entire the BDP lounge, man. No, imagine. it's called the burn down lounge. Oh yeah, of course. But because you know, have the burn down podcast, that's the podcast. We have the burn down lounge is the lounge. We have burn down cigars, which are these. Or it's the a, blueprint. Well, it's a lounge that strictly just sells our cigars. You know what? It would be like a Carnegie Club, right? Oh, it that would be the first of its kind. I don't know any. Uh, okay, there are there. I believe there are a few lounges out there that just sell their own hand rolled cigars, right? But uh, it it would be almost a first of its kind having a podcast, a cigar line, and its lounge just all about itself. We would do. We would do the. We could do the podcast from the lounge. Say less, bro. You know what I'm saying? Say less. And then you can, I can even see, you can have, like, our main focus is our cigars. You have, like, five, six, seven, whatever it is, ten different lines and all the different sizes. And those are the main focus. They take up, like, when you go to Matadors and, like, you go to the back wall, it's all Davidoff. The whole fucking thing is Davidoff. Yeah. That would be like the whole – this whole wall is all burned out. Blueprints oh, 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 and all the other ones, right? Cigars, yeah. And then you have a few other ones here and there for the people. But like this is the focus. Yeah, yeah. Most definitely. Dude, I like it. Dream building right on the on the show. Yeah, that was sick. 
I never thought of that. You know what I'm saying? And then we have a separate section in the back that's like a closed off room where we do the podcast from. And you have gla- you have the glass. Dude, you have the oh, lounge. Man, you, my man's mine is racing. Dude, right you now. have the lounge, right? And it's a lounge, the burned down lounge, okay? And we can hang out. You have the TVs, you have a whole nine, you have a bar, you have the, you have the our cigars are the main focus. And then in the back, you have a separate room that is set up for the podcast. It's got a table with all the microphones and it's got the cameras, it's got everything. But you have the the entire wall of it is glass and we soundproof like soundproof glass. But I don't know if you yeah. can do that, but we soundproof it where it's like completely sealed, like a recording studio yeah. where you have the guy who's the sound engineer and he's got the mixer and he can see through the glass. You can see the artists, but you can't hear them. So you, everybody that's at the lounge can see us recording the episode, but you can't hear it. And you have like an on air and you lock the door. You can't come in. Damn. And the people are like, what are you doing? Oh, that's our weekly show. Dude, quarter chub right now or quarter chub right now? Fucking plums are juiced right now. Dude, I'm telling you. Dream, dude. Dreaming. I love it. Dreams. That's that's going to happen. I like that idea. That's a great fucking idea. And it's just one spot, right? Because we always talked about eventually getting a a, a standalone spot that we could, in between wherever we are, that we can film. Just make that a lounge. Make that a members only lounge. Yeah, that, you know, yes. It's where we conduct business. But also, if you want to pay a monthly membership, you can come and hang out, smoke cigars, watch football, watch TV. And if you're a member, then you get the discount. It's like being a member on our website. That membership will tie over into – if you're a member on our website, you automatically get access into the – I like all the streaming stuff. Into the lounge. This is nice. This we is can nice. have monthly events there. It's real nice. Where we give it with the members only. If you're a member on the website, you come to the lounge. That's when we go live and we'll, we'll give out the gifts, the giveaways. Damn. Bro. Can we just come up with all that right here? Dude, my mind never shuts off, man. You know Sick. me. Sick. Fuck, don't get me started. Don't get the juices flowing. You don't tell me this shit. I just came up with it. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. We just came up with this on the fucking That pocket. whole glass thing, I just came up with that right there. Damn. It's good. It's like good. It. I like it. We're going we're gonna to call it. We're going to end it. We're going to call it. If you like this episode... Please hit the like button and the subscribe button. Check out the website, burnoutpodcast.com. Become a member. Check out the blueprint, our cigar. If you are a member to our website, you get 15% off. Okay? We also give away shit. Uh, <laughs> we also give away shit. <laughs> Cigars, accessories. Not shit. Good shit. Spirits and more to every uh, every month to all of our members. Um, and check out myself, the Dapper Cigar. Check out Eric, Brother Cigar. Check us out, Burnout Podcast. That's it. And we're on the road to 50,000 subscribers on YouTube. That's it. Or up to what? 41, 42,000? we're probably there. And the next road's 100,000, which we'll get there. Once we get 100,000, that plaque is going right. Oh, yeah. See that rookie move sign? We're getting I'm rid telling of that. you, that plaque, that's not far off, dude. No, it's not. We're getting rid of that plaque. We're going to put it over there. And we're, yep. I mean, we're going to get rid of this chalkboard thing because rookie moves. Put it over there. And we got the nice YouTube plaque. Actually, it's going to probably be blocked by you. So we got to put more of a centerpiece. No, we get it. We'll figure it out. But again, ladies and gents, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for listening. We appreciate you. Thank you for all our support. That being said, cheers, chin chin, and salute. We love you guys. Bye.